Well, hello and welcome to Thrive Again. Um, today's our last day in the Beatitudes. Um, we'll continue through the book of Matthew and, and we'll, we'll, we'll the next verse tomorrow, but um, today's our last day in the Beatitudes. We're going to be looking at, uh, in chapter 5, uh, verses 10 uh, and 11 and 12 today. Um, they all kind of talk about the same sort of thing. So we're going to read the whole Beatitudes, starting in verse 3 of chapter 5. And um, there was some bug on me, like... Like uh, Mike Pence had in the uh, the debate not too long ago. Um, man, that was weird. Sorry about that, guys. I am not editing these out because I don't edit these videos. I want you guys to want to be real with you guys. All right, chapter 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you, and other all and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word and thank you specifically for the Beatitudes here. And Lord, may this message today, this, this, this little Bible study today be a blessing to all of us and a challenge to some. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's look at it, guys. Blessed are those who are per are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. You know, persecution has has looks differently in, for different people at different times, and and I mean, a lot of times when people think of persecution, we're thinking of really hard persecution, right? Um, you know, being beaten, being killed, you know. Um, those sort of things. I have a friend who's from Egypt. Um, he was a Christian in Egypt, and he told me the story about how people in his neighborhood burnt his business down to the ground because he was a Christian. Uh, those were, and, that, and that's persecution. Um, we're very blessed here in America, in the United States, because we don't see that kind of persecution very often. Um, you know, violent persecution does happen to Christians. Right, we have seen shootings in churches, and we have seen, you know, uh, people beaten for for their beliefs. And but in the United States, more or less, more sometimes the persecution looks different. Sometimes it's being shunned, um, being talked down to, uh, not included in things. You know, um, I got a phone call from somebody not too long ago who was crying and upset, and uh, they were sharing with me how. Um, their unsaved friends treat them differently than they want to be treated. Um, they didn't want to tell um, this person about what was going on in their lives. Um, and they were sinners, and they were making wrong and bad, poor choices, right? Sinful choices. All right, so I lied. I'm going to edit this one time because I said something I shouldn't have. Um, and so I apologize. Um, as I was saying, this person I know was on the phone with me upset about how people were treating them, uh, unsaved people were treating them, um, and didn't understand it was because they were a Christian. You know, they felt like they were not being included in some of the the things going on. And these are this person's best friends, and, and they weren't sharing with them what was going on in their lives because they were making sinful choices, right? And they didn't want to feel judged, even though this person would not judge them uh, for their choices. This person loves these people, even though they're not Christians, loves them and wants them to know Jesus and wants to be a good influence on them. But um, they wouldn't um, share what was going on in their lives with this person. This person felt really left out because of it. But it wasn't because this person is judgmental or anything like that. It's because they're a Christian. And sin doesn't want to come face to face with God and with truth. Um, and that's why. It's a small form of, of persecution. Um, but persecution happens, right? People are treated badly for being Christians. 
today and, and sometimes in the the political climate or um, on Facebook we see it. Um, you know, there's there's no tolerance for Christianity. Um, people think it's anti-science, it's anti, you know, whatever, and and it's looked down upon or it's or it's persecuted against, and it happens. Um, I've seen lifelong friendships uh, be destroyed because the unsaved person no longer wants to be friends with this person because they can't stand the fact that they're a Christian. Uh, they can't imagine how anybody can be a Christian and they, they get mad about those things. It's unfortunate. Um, but it's, it's what happens. And, the, and it says here, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Man, you guys are blessed. And you have you should have peace and joy in that. Um, not that you're being persecuted, right? But but that you're living for God. And you're following after Him. Verse 11, blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you with and, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely. These things happen, guys. And he says you're blessed in these situations. You're blessed that they do these things against you. It's on Jesus' account. It's all about Jesus, right? They're doing it because they don't love Jesus. They hate Jesus, right? They're enemies with God still. And they take it on you because you're a follower. He says in verse 12, rejoice and be glad. Man, rejoice and be glad when you're persecuted. Why? Well, because your reward is great in heaven. Because your reward is great in heaven, rejoice and be glad with it. You have great reward in heaven. That should be a little exciting, guys, to think about. Persecution happens. People are going to persecute you. We have a choice on how we respond to that, don't we? We have a choice on how we respond to that. Uh, we can get down about it, we can get upset about it, or we can praise God, rejoice, and know that we have a great treasure in heaven. I will say, though, guys, in context, this is following the Beatitudes, and the verse right before this is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You know... I've known Christians in my life who share the gospel in an antagonistic way. And their thought was, well, if this person accepts Jesus, praise God. And if they get mad at me and persecute me and yell at me and get upset with me, well, then praise God, I get a reward in heaven. And they're very antagonistic in their, their approach with people. I don't think that's what he's talking about here. That's You know what? Don't go try to get persecuted. Try to be a peacemaker. Don't go out trying to get persecuted. But when you are persecuted for Jesus' sake, praise Him for it. Thank Him for it. Praise God. And then he gives the example. For so they persecuted the prophets who are before you. And that should be encouraging, guys. Christians, from for the last 2,000 years... Believers, um, you know, the Jews before that, those who followed God before that were persecuted. Um, you know, all the disciples died a martyr's death. Um, they all did. Um, Paul talks about being beaten, being stoned, being imprisoned, um, you know, starving and, and all these things. Um, and those are our examples. And yet they praise God for it. There's a story in the book of Acts where uh, um, Peter and John, I want to say, man, I'm going to get this wrong, I'm sure, and I probably should look it up, I'm not going to. Uh, they get arrested and put in jail. And no, I'm totally wrong. Paul and Silas are arrested and put in jail. And um, in Philippians, in, 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 in Philippi, and they're in jail and... and what do they do? They're singing praises and they're singing hymns and they're they're praising God uh, in that situation. And man, that's what we should be like, guys, in our persecution. Praise God for it. Don't get upset about it. Don't cry about it. Don't don't mourn about it. Praise God for it. 
now mourn and cry for the lost and for those who are making the wrong decisions and, and, and for the souls of the people that are persecuting you. Absolutely. But don't be upset that they persecute you. Continue to love them and to care for them and to uh, share the good news of Jesus with them in a loving and caring way and be an example to them. But understand, they're going to persecute you at some point. They're going to say things because they're against Jesus at some point. And when they do, just praise the Lord that you were able to do this for him because you're obeying him and you're living for him and you're, 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 you're trying to help others make peace with him. And you're trying to, to make peace with others. And praise God for it. Guys, I hope that's encouraging. This is a short one today. Um, but I hope it's encouraging to you. Um, don't be upset about it. When people are, get upset with you, treat you poorly. Praise God and go on. All right, guys, that ends the, our talk to the Beatitudes. Um, man, I, you know, if you've watched all these, you might have the Beatitudes memorized by now. Uh, tomorrow we're going to continue in Matthew chapter 5 as we continue looking at the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and... Uh, we're going, to, we're going to be going a little faster pace now because they, they, they teach you the little bigger chunks, all right? Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, be blessed.